Claire from Creative The Otter Way. I'm an independent demonstrator for Stampin' Up! in the UK. Um, thank you for joining me today. I've got a lovely little, well, I suppose you could call it a fun fold. Um, it's very unassuming on the outside. I've just stamped with real red ink on real red card. Done a little bit of heat embossing just so that there's a hint that there's more to come in the inside. And when you open it up, there's a couple of panels in the middle of the card that have got vellum, which I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see from this angle, but you just put a candle behind and oh, you get the tea light effect, which I don't know, is that showing up? But trust me, it's a bit of a wow when you see it. So I'm going to show you how to put that together. It's very, very easy. We've just been making it in one of my in-person workshops, which everybody has loved. I'm particularly loving being back in person with everyone. So much nicer to chat in the flesh. What have we used? We used the Christmas season stamp set. We also used some sentiments from the Christmas to remember stamp set. And although the dies are absolutely amazing, I think we just used one die. Um, in a workshop, it's quite hard with everybody die cutting and sharing dies. So we've been practicing our stamping and getting back into falling in love with that again. So lots of stamping this time. So what do you need to make this card? Um, if I leave that there, very simple. It's like two cards in one. So you've got the outer card, the card base which is just a normal A4 cut in half, scored down the middle, and that gives you the outer. And then the inside is just an eighth of an inch smaller. And you just do a couple of score lines and we add the vellum to it. So really, really simple. Um, let's get crafting. So some of it I've already prepped. So let's see what we've got. So I'm using Real Red, um, just because it's particularly Christmassy for me. And I have taken my A4 sheet on the short side, I've cut it a four and one eighth, okay? And that gives me that long piece. Turned it round on the long side and I've scored it at five and seven eighths. And that gives me the outside to my card. I've then taken a piece of real red to do the front and that I have cut at three and seven eighths by five and a half and I'm just going to stamp that all over with one of the leaves from the set. So there's, there is holly, um, instantly recognisable, but you could use any of them. You could even use a cone on the red, it really won't matter. So I'm going to pick one of these, I think this one this time, and I'm just going to ink it up and I'm just going to go all over the front of this card. I really love how you can ink real red on real red card or any Stampin' Up! colour actually on the colour card and it still shows out. So if you're a beginner, you don't need to go and buy loads and loads of different colours to start with. You can do a lot just with one colour and one colour card. Now I'm gonna get a bit inky here, I can see. Just going all over. I'm just twisting the stamp around so it gives me a different perspective. I'm just trying to fit them all in. I mean, really, it's not about the front of the card, it's about the inside, but we're nearly there. I think I'm just going to do one there and I'm going to leave that there. So that can straight away be put straight on the front of your card. Okay. And already it stands out. So let's see if the Tombow glue is going to work. Oh, a bit too much, isn't it? It's coming out a bit squirty. So that is just going to go on the front panel and that size just fits in nicely and it just frames the card. So that's there. 
And then what I've done just to save time is I've used the Love and Joy stamp from the Christmas to Remember set and I've just heat embossed that. Um, if you're new to stamping and you don't know what heat embossing is, that is in another video. But basically you use a special type of ink, you add some powder to it and heat it and it gives you that amazing effect. So I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of that. I have deliberately kept the front of this card fairly plain. I know you've got the dies and the stamps and you can really fill it out if you wanted to. If it was for a particularly special person um, and you really wanted to show off your talent, because yes, you do have a talent, then I would do that. But I'm just going to keep it like that. So it's a hint that there's more to come on the inside. There's going to be a bit of a wow. Now that really essentially is your card base done. So just put that to one side and we're going to concentrate on the white piece. So the white, what do we need to do for this? So the size of this is just an eighth of an inch smaller. So this has been cut. Oh, at four inches by nine sixty, so four inches there. Okay, and then let me tell you what the actual size is. So I'm just going to line it up there. So it's eleven and nine sixteenths. And then what you're going to do is score it in half, which on this one is five and eleven sixteenths. Now, if you're not great with measurements, what you could do is just fold your card in half and then just press it down with your bone folder. So you will have a white piece with a score line down the middle. How do you get these other two score lines? Easy. Fold it over. And what you're going to do is do them both at the same time at one and three quarters. So one and three quarters. Make sure the blade is out of the way and just score it. And then just to make sure it's scored both sides, you turn it over and do it one and three quarters and score it again. And that gives you that shape, okay? So now what we need to do is decorate that on the inside. So on my original card, what I did was I started with the sentiment on this side and then I just followed round where I felt would be the most effective um what i also did because it's quite hard when you're just sitting there trying to think what pattern to do i got the paper out that is from the painted christmas set and i took a piece that i particularly liked which is this one and i just cased or copied whichever you prefer the colors so i've got um evening evergreen and i did the big leaves in that I've got the real red berries and then I've used some pear pizzazz and some sea soft foam and I've just built it up. So let's try that again now. Okay, so if I take this one out of the way, so the first thing I'm going to do is the sentiment. So this one, may your Christmas be, may your, this be a Christmas to remember and cherish. So may this be, let's, that's the right one. So I'm going to get my block. I always do mine at an angle just because then my eye will concentrate on the stamp and not the edge of the block. And I'm using Early Espresso, just this very dark brown. Now you could stamp off if you don't want it so thick. Let's make sure we get it the right way around. And I'm just doing the sentiment first because that will help guide where I put my pattern around the edge. So that is going there. So I don't think we need early espresso again. Now I'm going to start with the biggest leaf and the darkest leaf. So I'm going to do that one. And let's see if I can get that block. And I'm going to do it with evening evergreen. And again, I'm just going to do a few round. So I'm going to do one there, one there, one up there. What else do I? 
Let's just turn that stamp a bit. So you can take as much time as you need to do this. I am just doing it quick so you don't get bored watching. I also, because I know these two panels are going to be a focal point for the candle, I'm going to make sure that I've covered those. So I'm leaving this bit gap. I'm leaving room to write my sentiment here. And the rest, I am filling with pattern. But with stamping. So the next one I am going to do is this one, I think. And I'm going to go slightly lighter, pear pizzazz. Um, that is going to go there. Just do that there. Just building up my stamping. And honestly, you will look at this as you're doing it and think, oh my goodness, that is not looking good at all. I'm overlapping, I'm not stamping properly. But by the end of it, I absolutely promise you will love it. Okay, see that looks odd to me straight away, but it's going to be fine. I'm going to go with it. The next one I'm going to do is these, which are like little fur ties. Do I want those next year? And I'm going to do those with the garden green. Just because I want quite a few different greens. Okay, now this is going to go there and there. Oh, garden green. There. Right, it's looking okay. Trying to do it so you can see as well. Just building it up. This is the perfect set to do um, a wreath with because it's all it's got it all there. It's got all the different shaped leaves. Um, that one there, and I'm going to do one there. Okay, I feel like that is good. And then we need. We need the berries. Let's do those berries next. So the berries need to be, the stalk of the berries is brown or early espresso. Thank you for sticking with me. We are nearly there. So I am going to do some there. Some there. Definitely some there. I feel like I need some red over here. Definitely need some here. Yep. And maybe some here. So now I need the red berries. So I've used, if you look on my stamp set, I've used loads of the stamps so far. Let's move some of these out the way. And we're now on red. Now this card is obviously a Christmas card, but you could use this same type of card for... Now I've forgotten which way around this is going. I need to stop talking for a minute. That's it there. I got the berries right. Ta-da! Right, red. Um, you could use it for a sympathy card. You could use it for a Christmas card. Um, you could use it for a christening card. There is lots of reasons to make a tea light card. Oh, there's another one up there, isn't there? Right, I'm going to turn that round so that I get that right. Okay, let's have a look. Step back and have a look at that. Yeah, that's looking good. I'm quite happy with that. I think that I'm just going to leave it, otherwise I'm going to keep going. You can take as much time as you want for yours. 
Now, how do we do this bit? So remember me saying that we're going to use one of the dies. So we're going to use this smallest die here. And what we're going to do is actually fold the card in half and die cut it both sides at the same time. This means that it will be level and you don't have to try and match it up. We're going to use some washi tape to hold it in place. About there, I think. I'm just going to die cut that, if you could bear with me. I've got two pieces of vellum. So these pieces of vellum are one and three quarters by four inches. And they are just going to go on the back of here. So if I open my card up, you can see the windows. And they will go exactly on the back there. I just need to trim them a bit because I think they've been too big. So let's cut them off a little bit there. So probably by three and three quarters rather than four. So one and three quarters by three and three quarters. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, I think I'll put some, I'll use Tombow because it's here, but you're probably better off using some double-sided, just at the top and the bottom, just because the double-sided won't, you won't have to wait for it to dry. Okay, so that's that. And then I'll put one on this side. And that is like that. Okay, turn that over and you can see the vellum is there. Now, to get this to fit inside your card, inside here, open this up, open the red base up, put this onto there. Remember it's an eighth of an inch smaller. So what you need to do is make sure that this folds over like so and that's how you're going to get it to stick down so this bit here is going to go on to the front of your card and we're just going to put some glue on this front panel like so okay so i'm just going to pull that over and just make sure there's a, a tiny frame all round your card on this side the red the red piece is the frame that I'm looking for okay so I'm just gluing that down bring that over and just make sure that that is really firm down then I'm putting glue on this piece because it's easier to do it this way round than stretch the white panel across this is coming over and just make sure that that meets and just hold it down for a minute. Just press down so that the glue is well and truly stuck. And that is your window vellum card. So where do I put my candle here? So if I put the candle on, let's see if we can get a bit of a... So that is just going to stand over like that. Obviously, you can see it there, but can you see it like that? So, a lovely little gift, Christmas card, all in one. Thank you for watching. Now, if you've liked my video and you're not put off by my chatter, subscribe and you will see a new video every week with a little bit of fun, straight to the point, crafting, not too much chatter. Um, thank you for watching.